The Acura MDX was the first crossover SUV to introduce a third row seating. It was introduced in October 2000. It shared a lot with the Honda Pilot. The difference was that the uh, Acura MDX only offers up to seven seatings. Meanwhile, in the uh, Honda Pilot, you could get up to eight. At this point, my microphone cut out because it was minus 21 degrees out there and somehow the battery died completely. I didn't realize it was that cold outside due to the fact that I was super excited about this new MDX, which in my opinion, it is the most important three row SUV of 2021. The 2022 Acura MDX. You can call the MDX one of the founding members of the three row SUV luxury segment. New changes to the MDX are absolutely radical. And I believe that the Acura brand has gone all the way to make sure that this vehicle doesn't disappoint anyone. Before we get into the good stuff, I'd like to thank everyone at Acura North Mississauga for making this video possible. They are kind enough to get the older and new generation MDX ready for this review. If you want to find out more about Acura North Mississauga, which is located in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, the link will be in the description box. And to make sure this is a fair review and unbiased, as I usually do, this video is not sponsored in any way from this dealership. I do not in any way get paid from any dealership at this moment. I'm just happy to review cars. To add to this, I'll be comparing the new MDX to all its competitors. The first one is the 2021 Lincoln Aviator, another favorite three row SUV of mine. And of course, the rest of the competitors in the coming weeks. Anyways, back to this video. So what are we trying to find out in this video? First, what's new for 2022? And of course, how does it compare to the older generation MDX? And then I'll be taking it for a test drive. The fourth generation MDX has received major updates from exterior. The new MDX sits 2.8 inch longer wheelbase with a stance that's 1.4 inches wider in the front and of course the rear end. It has a longer wheelbase and of course longer body. It also has received more space compared to the previous generation. So let's talk about the maximum cargo volume behind the third row. The older model offers 15.8 cubic feet of space. The new generation offers 18 point one cubic feet of space and if you fold all the seats down the older generation offers 90.9 cubic feet of space the new generation offers 95.0 that is quite a lot the mdx is larger and of course more spacious compared to the older one the most significant dimensional change is the dash to axle ratio which has been extended by more than four inches this lengthens the hood line significantly and if you pop the hood you will see the massive space between the engine bay and the front end chassis which also means there's a chance we're going to get a very interesting vehicle besides the standard model that we have for today's video the new exterior design features are very noticeable compared to the older generation as you can see from this video of course that is the beautiful thing about doing a comparison, old versus new. The new MDX has a bigger smile and thinner headlights. It uses a diamond pentagon grille and new four element dual eye LED headlights within the embedded chicane. It has the daytime running lights with this specific design. That similar design has been applied to the taillights and around dark areas, the taillights look like a 3D design. Absolutely love it. Now, what are my thoughts about this design? I am really impressed. Actually more impressed with the MDX than I was with the new TLX, especially the front end of the new MDX, which has been done correctly. It is sleek, luxurious, the chrome finish, the front end, the side profile wave looks fantastic. 10 out of 10 in my opinion. In fact, the new MDX has received a more lighter and better looking key fob compared to the TLX, which kind of missed out. It inherited the previous generation key fob. In terms of the trim changes, the MDX A-Spec adds ventilated front seats while the advanced package gains additional power adjusting side bolsters and the thigh extensions for 16-way adjustment. 
Now, before we move into the engine specs, here's a few things we noticed with the new MDX. The hood has two latch hooks under the actual hood itself compared to the older generation which only used only one and of course it has two dampers in total one on each side why are those important well it keeps the hood tighter and of course it offers a firmer ride and you don't have to hear the rattling noise coming out of the front end the second thing i noticed is the engine air filter has been moved and now it's tucked in with the engine cleaner design compared to the older generation. There's also that noticeable space between the engine and the front end that I mentioned previously, which I assume is left for the spicier version MDX, the Type S MDX, which means we'll have a turbocharged engine, which will use that space that you can see around the engine. So what do we have under the hood? The 2022 Acura MDX uses an advanced 3.5 liter direct injected V6 engine, which is rated at 290 horsepower and 267 pound feet of torque. For the first time ever, the 3.5 liter V6 in the MDX is paired with Acura's 10 speed automatic transmission with a sequential sport shift and, of course, standard paddle shifters if you want to have some fun. Okay, so let's talk about the rear end. First of all, as you can see, the difference is massive. Now we have this chicane style on the rear end, and it looks so much sexier. And of course, this time, if you have the key fob, kick underneath, you just gotta make sure you kick once. Oh, I did it twice, because basically what it does, it closes. Now it closed it, and if we redo that, once and then bang on so you can basically open it and close it with uh, the kick option very smart most importantly this year they have included see this button over here you press that and then you just walk away it's kind of cold and the focus is not working and now you have the mdx uh, logo this has the winter package of course and the next thing let me show you something really cool and give you a full view there we go pull this up and you got more space but what you can do you can basically slide this under and then you get yourself more space very very smart now let me show you the side profile absolutely love this design look at this all the way through and the difference with this new one older one the handles the whole profile all the way to the end beautiful most importantly the wheels are so much sexier in this new generation we have the chrome around it at the top same thing at the bottom something in the older one you had it right into this area the new one has it here and then you have it over there so they have extended that and most importantly here's a cool feature about this so when you open the door the end part over here compares to the older one so this way you don't get it dirty on the inside it protects it and it goes all the way from the back into the front let me show you around here this is the interior and of course it has a full panoramic roof most importantly it's the center in this side and the seats are nice leather you have a button here to fold it and of course lever it also has a button behind here if someone is stuck in the back and can't come out but with this option what you have is that if you pull this lever and then you can actually pull this up you can actually remove the seat in the center completely basically as you can see whole way out just look at that it has the the actual uh, hooks at the bottom you can just remove the seat completely that is quite amazing. Or you just turn them completely into captain chair. Like that is amazing design, especially for families. This is an extra feature to have. Now let's jump inside and let me show you. So onto the interior. First of all, what do we have? Now we have a full climate unit in the back. As you can see, it has heated seats for both sides. And to this area, we have two USB ports in there, a 12 volt power outlet and 115 volts outlet in here if you can charge anything that can support that kind of uh, uh, power, of course. And then this is the front end completely redesigned from the previous generation. 
the beautiful interior and specifically the interior lighting is so much better compared to the older generation full panoramic roof beautiful design and very spacious in here now in terms of the seats in the second row you can slide it back and forth with this lever located onto this side and you can also adjust the recliner with this button onto this with the lever onto the side you can adjust the recliner completely it has of course the shades into this um i do apologize for my mittens but it's minus 21 uh, outside that's celsius so i'm not sure what would be in the fahrenheit but that just to give you an idea and then we have more onto this area like this thing it's so much different to the older generation in my opinion into the back we have a usb port in there we have speakers onto that side more speakers there is uh, of course the interior lighting for uh the third row and we have two seats in the back now as the third row in here i wouldn't try for adults it looks amazing uh it looks spacious most importantly so what they've done is that this area here is kind of pushed in so that way it gives you more head room the seats are nice beautiful stitches and of course leather interior most importantly absolutely love this feature in here you can actually remove this completely and have two captain chairs so you can put a baby seat in the front now they've included the actual seat belt of course and to the side it's tucked into this area but just to give you an idea and of course more space here you can put your lunch box and so on you have a beautiful view off the front area of the vehicle it looks absolutely stunning in my opinion now let's jump into the front and let me show you some of the cool th things about the uh, front area and what do we have for this year that is the acura logo as you get into the car beautiful welcoming and most importantly this thing looks so much different than the previous generation and it's also so much sexier and luxurious in my opinion i love this area here i love the black parts they have put some wood in this side as you can see the wood looks nice but they haven't overdone it in my opinion they have just done it right so let me give you a tour or what do we have for the 2022 acura mdx the steering wheel it looks very similar like the rdx for example or the new tlx they share quite a lot with each other most importantly we have a digital cluster now let's start it up we have an engine start button there beautiful welcoming digital cluster finally something that we can enjoy from acura absolutely love this new vehicle and most importantly the steering column it's powered so here we go um love that cluster now if you change the modes you have in sport normal comfort snow and i just put it into comfort for now um and here we go 12.3 inch infotainment screen massive i'm going to say something here about this system it is not touch screen of course like the tlx it is used through this trackpad into the center but here's what i noticed compared to the tlx which again i didn't like it very much in the tlx what i found was the fact that it wasn't very intuitive but with this screen things change a lot the way I see this is so much better and so much crisper compared to the uh, standard TLX. This is bigger, it's 12.3, it's massive. But I find it user, in terms of the user interface and of course how convenient it is to use without the touchscreen, I find this much better compared to the TLX. It's easy to work around. You just gotta learn it a little bit. And most importantly, this year we have quite a lot of extra features. So you have Alexa. And with the Alexa option, you can find addresses, restaurants, add a lot of features with the Alexa option. And it has this cabin talk. Now the cabin talk we have seen in another vehicle. So basically what it does is that you can, um, don't, you don't have to raise your voice it basically plays the your voice through the microphone it captures it and then it plays in the back 
um, you can raise it volume and lower it from here so they can hear you more in the back. It's a very useful feature, especially for three row SUVs. I'm happy that Acura offered this in the new MDX. It of course has the built-in navigation system. You have voice control as well. And as they continue offline, you can have online or offline. So that way it shows you traffic as well. Most importantly for this year, we have a full 360 camera. With this year, we have a tilting mirror. So basically when you put it in reverse, we put it into drive for now. You go back to normal. And then when you put it in reverse, there you go. And look at the screen. The screen is full 360 mode. Um, you can change the view, you can do the like a th uh, 180 option um, and then the side one as well and this is a fisheye style the most important 360 camera and it shows you when the steering is moving shows you the car this screen is huge in my opinion now the actual infotainment screen the infotainment system itself it's very much the one used in TLX uh, you have this smart shortcuts that you can use you can add a lot of extra features in there too um, it's quite intuitive with a bigger screen. That's one thing I noticed compared to the TLX. And as I said in the TLX, this thing is very annoying. But in here, somehow, because it is a bigger screen, it's easy to use. So what do we have in terms of features for this year? You have, of course, an Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and you can connect it through wireless connectivity. So that way, you don't have to actually plug it at all. Very smart. And most importantly, you have the wireless charging pad in here. This thing, I have to say, is huge. And I love the fact that I have this on top of it. This way, you slide your phone under, but most importantly, this, even the phone's getting bigger, it will still be very helpful. Because in some places, like the Colorado ZR2 that I noticed, it's in here, but it's so much smaller. In here, it's actually perfect size. You can also turn it on and turn it off with this button located into there. Slide your phone and it's good to go. Now, a hidden feature. The USB port, you don't see them right in here, right? You just press this button over here, bang on, USB-C and USB port. Smart. Brake hold, similar to the older generation. And of course, it has power handbrake, similar to the older generation. This center here, very similar to the TLX. You have the dynamic mode for different driving modes, like we can change in there. Look how beautiful that is in snow mode. Love that side rolling profile, rolling shot kind of thing that we do with cars in uh, YouTube. Absolutely love that. Now, the next thing you need to know, it's in here. So this, it's called auto seat heat and ventilated. So this, basically what it does, it decides whether you need to turn on the heated option or the cooling side. And it will do that automatically for you. You don't have to worry about it. That way, based on the temperature outside, it will create the right temperature for the seat. That's what I love about it. So right now it's actually a two. I didn't even turn it on at all. In here, there's no passenger, so it's not turned on. It's not turning on anything. So once you have a passenger sitting, that's when you start, when you notice that either the ventilator or the heated option is on. Isn't that smart? That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant, I must say. This here is the climate unit control, of course, and you have the option for the rear settings. Now, let's turn that on, and for the rear settings, you can change the temperature in here, and if you have children in the back, you put the lock, they can play around with it. Um, and then you have different modes in here and you have automatic and synchronized as well. This is a dual climate. So you have temperature on this side and one on this area. I must say the interior of this vehicle, it's so sexy. This time passenger gets three memory seats. Same thing with the driver's side in here. So you have memory seat on that side, memory seat on this side. Now let's go into this area. So this has the heads up display. As you can see, massive heads up display, and then you can adjust it with the buttons located onto this side. And as you can see, this part here, and then the heads up display, this shows you the brightness. This is the position. And if you wanna change the settings for heads up display, you have them through here. You can change a lot of those settings. And most importantly, what I love about this is the digital cluster. It looks so much more luxurious and so competitive. It has a premium audio system and it offers quite a lot of amazing features now as i said this has a panoramic roof you have a button in here for the actual sunshade so you can close it in case if people don't want the sunroof to be completely open 
Now let's talk about things that they missed in here. Well, first of all, a touchscreen option should have been offered with this model. Um, I think it would have made the car a lot more interesting. And the other thing I don't like is the fact that the third row, behind the third row, you don't have the option to actually fold the second row. So you have to do it manually. Now for a luxury vehicle, that should have been offered. But again, just a bit of an inconvenience. You have to come in the front, fold them, but you have buttons, of course. The seats are nice and grippy and hugging. Like they're just very nice. And I have a jacket on and it still feels nice and comfortable. We have two cup holders in here and then the armrest itself can be split in two. So you have this first option, you can hide maybe coins in there or your keys or something. And then you have the other one in there. Now we have more space in here, of course. And then you see in here, you can slide your actual cable so that way it doesn't get caught in between. So you get some space to this area. But most importantly, USB port. I absolutely love the new MDX and compare to the older generation over there, this thing, it's so much better. The steering wheel, it's so good. The whole design of this new model, it's so different compared to the older generation. It's radical change in my opinion. And up till now, if you'd ask me, should you go for the new one or the older one? I'd say the new one, it's worth every penny. And now that's not to say that the older one, it's not good. You probably could get some discounts right now with the older generation, but if you really want an upgrade, this is the way to go. Now let's take this for a test drive and see how it does on the road. Okay, so let's go for a drive. First of all, here's one thing you need to know. If you want to turn on the camera, the 360 camera, you have this button over here. You can turn it on, turn it off. It's very easy access. The next thing that is a security feature in this, I didn't lock the, the door completely. It's not closed. So let's put it in reverse. And here's what happens. It doesn't go because the door is completely open. So in order for it to go, you have to close it. Um, it moves a little bit and then it goes and then once it realizes it will stop. So I noticed that before. So let's leave it open. You have to close the door. Um, for some reasons, it's not doing it right now, but before I noticed it wouldn't let me go because the door was open. That's something you need to know about this uh, vehicle. It's quite amazing. Now, so let's go for a test drive. Um, I'm super excited about this because I've been waiting to review this and test drive for a while now and look at that the front and surround it's just sharp the screen is huge it's actually one of the biggest in the market out of the competitors and you have a full view of the camera in the front so let's talk about the new mdx the engine one thing you need to know is that under the hood, this uses the exact same engine as the previous generation. The difference is that that 3.5 liter is made into a 10 speed automatic transmission, which has precision uh, sport shifting. So basically it shifts faster than the previous generation. You have pedal shifts as onto the steering wheel. Now the actual cluster as we're driving shows the vehicle in front of me. You have the center vehicle in the, to the cluster because this is beautiful digital cluster and you can see the vehicle in front. It has a lot of security features from gap assist, lane assist, forward collision warning as well. A lot more than the previous generation. I am obsessed with this auto option in this vehicle. The auto option for the heated seats and ventilated seats. It's such an amazing feature to have in my opinion. It's so smart. Every vehicle should have that. Most importantly is that center seat in the second row that it's worth a million dollars. Now let's talk about the steering wheel. So you see, so the new generation MDX uses uh, a belt driven electric power steering, EPS is called, with a high output, and of course it uses an electric motor. So that's something to keep in mind as well, which makes this a very light steering compared to the previous generation. It is quick, agile, and importantly, it's quicker if you need to turn in certain areas. It reacts much faster than the previous generation. The next thing you need to know is, of course, the brakes compared to the older generation. For better braking, the new MDX has larger and thicker front brake rotors and new electric 
brake booster. With the front rotors now, you are, they are two millimeters uh, thicker and 30 millimeter larger compared to the previous generation. Acura says the new brakes can withstand repeated hard stops without reduced performance. It also has a new electric brake booster that allows better for the collision mitigation warning. So now with the new one, basically it will protect you more uh, in certain areas or positions where you're hard braking. So it's mostly a security feature used in the new generation. Acura also says that the new model uses better suspension system compared to the older one. It has better grip on the road, it drives softer on the road, at the same time it doesn't reduce the performance of the vehicle. The new generation super handling all-wheel drive has 40% more rear torque capacity and 30% quicker front to rear torque transfer than the third generation system used in the previous model. The super handling all-wheel drive system now can transfer up to 70% of the engine torque to the rear axle during normal driving conditions. This is a new platform, of course, the body and the chassis, and now it uses double wishbone in the front and of course a multi-link rear suspension system in the, back, in the rear. In the front, the damper connects to a new cast aluminum housing that is that is 45% stiffer overall for better noise isolation, which technically makes this new MDX uh, better when it comes to the noise and the interior noise. Now, does it feel quieter compared to the older one? Definitely. I'm sitting in traffic right now and there's a truck just passed by on my left. You don't hear it as much. And the other thing I noticed is you don't hear the engine as much compared to the previous generation when you rev it high. The comfort level in this vehicle, in my opinion, is so much different than the previous generation. Also, we have blind spot assist now, which is located onto this side, not the actual mirror itself. Very smart. The mirrors on this are huge, which, of course, better visibility. Visibility in total is better, in my opinion. The windows are actually slightly larger compared to the previous generation, I've noticed that. And visibility in the back is far better. Now, even with the actual third row up and the headrest up, I can still see the car behind me from the rear view mirror. On top of that, you just press this button at low speeds, at low speed only, and you can have a full view of the surrounding area of the vehicle. That is quite impressive. Okay, so let's try the cruise control here. Um, I have the camera pointed in there. Okay, let's turn it on. It shows the vehicle in front of you moving. Here we go. Set, lane assist, and I'm just letting it drive in traffic. It's kind of scary, I won't lie to you, but it, this feels very, very good. Okay, lane assist is on. You can turn on this button over here, and it's picking the lanes. got to pick the lanes once it sees the lanes and it's there you go now it's it's green light so it's literally keeping you within the lanes and it's very very accurate in my opinion and the problem is that it takes some time to figure out the lanes you got to make sure that you're right in the center and you recognize the lanes it keeps your hands on the steering wheel um, very very smart it also shows you the distance with the car in front of you so you can increase the gap or decrease of course that way you keep a further distance with the vehicle in front of you and once you realize that there is a vehicle in front here we go and let's see if it's going to stop it's slowing down because there is a vehicle in front of us it's very very accurate and I'm not even pressing the brakes at all in here and now the vehicle in front left, I'm not pressing anything at all. It's doing everything on its own and there are no lanes in between. So there we go. So it works with the lanes. That's one thing I noticed with this vehicle. And it's super accurate once it can figure out where exactly you are in the position. And right now there's a vehicle in front of me and I'm not pressing anything. It's doing all on its own. Well done and amazing adaptive cruise control. Um, it shows the vehicle right in front of you and uh, the vehicle is moving, it's keeping that distance, it's, it's calculating everything to make sure it keeps you 
within the lanes. It takes a bit of time to realize that I don't have my hands on the steering wheel. I guess the sensor is a bit delayed, but other than that, it's super accurate. I like the new MDX. I'm very excited to compare it to other vehicles because this is a serious competitor right now in the market. Love it. With that in mind, thanks for watching, guys. A special thanks goes to my good friends at Acura Performance North Mississauga for allowing me to borrow the older and the new generation and show you what they're all about. With that in mind, please stay safe. Cheers.